The plan to colonize Mars is coming along perfectly for Elon Musk. There is no doubt that it is ambitious to say the least, but there is no stopping this man as he wants to achieve everything that seems impossible. After the successful ventures of Tesla, he is now coming out with a big gun that will change everything in the realms of space and will prove to be revolutionary. Here's where the Raptor engine comes in. These methane-fueled superpowers may power Elon Musk's goal to reach Mars by 2024 on their own, not to be mistaken with the Merlin engines used by SpaceX on its current Falcon 9 reusable rockets. The Raptor engines are being designed for SpaceX's Starship and its rocket stage. As you all know, Elon Musk is not shy on social media and he does not hesitate to share the progress of his company through his social media. Just like this, the SpaceX Starship in question also deserved a grand welcome online. On one fine Monday, he went on to share the photos of all the SpaceX engineers who were involved in the installation of engines specifically for the Raptor. This was so exciting that it got his fan base wanting more and more. Everyone was curious about the capability and strength of the Raptor. These engines were being installed on a Starship launch vehicle right before it was about to be launched for its orbital flight. You must also know how vocal Musk is on Twitter and how his tweets cause evident changes in the realms of the market. He tweeted that around 29 Raptor engines were installed onto a rocket booster, which was approximately 23 stories. Yes, you heard that right. This gigantic starship consists of 23 stories and no less. Raptor engines usually are developed by SpaceX themselves, and this process takes place internally. The main ingredients for these mesmeric engines are liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Sounds simple, right? Well, it takes days of optimization and hard work from all the assigned engineers to get the right results on the benchmark and making sure that the Starship is fit for flying standards. You will be fascinated to know that each engine has more than twice the power the Merlin engine used to have, the same engine which was equipped on Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy vehicles. Finally, he also posted a photo of his one-year-old son, whose name we cannot pronounce, along with the super heavy booster of the Starship visible in the background. This was fascinating for his fan base as this was the beginning of something great. The history of launches can be tracked down back to the Middle Ages, but we'll be focusing on rockets developed to transfer people and objects into space. Let us go back to 1898 when a Soviet schoolteacher called Konstantin Tsiolkovsky presented the crazy notion of utilizing liquid propellants and rockets to explore space. Tsiolkovsky was persuaded that a rocket's speed and range were only limited by the engine velocity of escaping gases. He was the first to consider escaping Earth's gravity by attaching himself to a tube filled with burning gases. Fast forward a few decades and rockets were being manufactured all over the world for military objectives rather than space exploration. Following the Great Wars, experts like Robert H. Goddard and European engineers such as Hermann Oberth would establish the groundwork for developing rocket engines and with the war stoking the space race, a new era of technological advances was upon us. The rest is history, as the US did likewise with the development of its Saturn V rocket, which would start taking the first people to the moon as time passed. The European Space Agency in India, along with other indigenous rocket designs, have set their sights on Mars, and to get there, they are rethinking rockets from the ground up. Getting to Mars and back would require a new spacecraft powered by a completely new rocket engine, unlike anything done before. SpaceX began the development of the Starship previously known as the Big Falcon. The initial decision made by SpaceX was to build the rocket. SpaceX has always been very good at reusable rockets and they promote this culture. They saw the massive costs of one-time use rockets that NASA was using for its space-bound missions and thought to themselves, why are we dumping millions of dollars of equipment into the oceans when we can develop the technology to reuse it? It took several years and a lot of sweat and blood for SpaceX to make reusable rockets a realistic option. And now, Falcon 9s are the industry standard for reusable rockets. Other advantages of using a full-flow stage combustor cycle include turbines that run fresher and at reduced pressure due to increased mass flow, which leads to improved power consumption and greater reliability, which is exactly what SpaceX wanted for the engine that will power the Starship. An engine with such a long life and higher reliability can be safely repurposed multiple times without servicing, which will significantly reduce costs and outages between launches. Imagine if the Raptor had not been designed with reusability in mind, which would mean 25 different rockets would be used for the same flights and then discarded. Another engineering choice was to feed the Raptor engine with cryogenic liquid methane, which is an unprecedented move for rocket engines. Most rocket engines use Rocket Propellant 1 or RP-1 as their primary fuel. RP-1 is simply a more refined version of jet fuel. 
In fact, previous SpaceX engines, such as the Merlin engine on the Falcon 9 and the Kestrel engines, both used RP-1 as their fuel. So when SpaceX announced that the Raptor would be powered by cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen, it came as a surprise to SpaceX fans. For Raptor, SpaceX was committed to using methane as its primary fuel. One of the main reasons for this unconventional design choice is related to the geological landscape and atmosphere of Mars. See, the Raptor was designed specifically for a Starship and the Mars mission, so when NASA's rover missions to Mars revealed that the atmosphere of Mars had massive amounts of CO2 in the air and abundant amounts of frozen water on the ground, SpaceX realized that they could theoretically synthesize methane. This is keeping with SpaceX's goal of making Mars a self-sustaining colony that does not require assistance from Earth. The saboteur process, which creates methane from carbon dioxide and water, also produces oxygen as a byproduct, which the colony will utilize. At the International Space Station, astronauts have previously utilized this tried-and-true method to create oxygen from water and remove carbon dioxide. It's all about water. Some of you may be asking why we can't utilize water or hydrogen to fuel the Raptor engines that will launch from Mars. Even though hydrogen is a more efficient fuel, it complicates rocket engines and rocket architecture. SpaceX wants their rockets to be simple, inexpensive, and dependable. And according to Elon Musk, the greatest component is no part, and the best process is no process. Therefore, the company chose a methane-fueled engine over a hydrogen-fueled engine. Compared to the yellow flame of RP-1-powered engines, methane burns with a brilliant blue flame, which gives the Raptor engine a distinct trademark appearance. In August of last year, at the SpaceX facility, SpaceX first tested its Raptor engine on an SN5 Starship in a hop test, in which a single Raptor engine flew the SN5 500 feet in the air before safely landing. Following the successful test, SpaceX did many additional short hop tests. Finally, the big day arrived, and on the 9th of December 2020, everyone gathered to see the first high elevation test for the Raptor engine hung on the Starship SN8. The SN8 was equipped with three Raptor engines and took to the skies at Texas, where it effectively ascended to its target altitude of 10 kilometers. Let us know how you feel about the revolutionary Starship Raptor and how you see the future of space. Please hit the like and subscribe button and press the bell icon to get regular updates on interesting and informative videos like this. Take care and have a good day.